I'm Josh. And this video is about Libidocax, the world's most widespread species of magic mushroom. And though this video is long, I hope it might be the quickest way possible to go from not knowing anything about mushroom identification to actually having the skills necessary to have a go at identifying Libidocax. I hope this resource helps you. It's coming to you from a new non-profit organisation called The Forest. I'll tell you a little bit more about the forest later on, and there's a link in the description. We'd love you to join our community. So in five minutes or so, we'll get down to some proper mushroom identification. But before that, I'm going to make some things clear about what this video is for, perhaps provide some context and explain the approach. So the intent of this video, sharing this information publicly, isn't to encourage anyone to pick and eat magic mushrooms such as Liberty Cats. Before you think about doing that, you should be aware that in many places, like here in the UK, these mushrooms that naturally contain psilocybin are in most circumstances illegal to possess. So please make sure you understand the implications of the law wherever you are, especially as being criminalised by the authorities could be a lot more harmful to your life than most possible outcomes of eating forage mushrooms. So in the footage that I filmed, you won't actually see me picking any liberty caps. But where there's things that my footage didn't really quite capture, I've included some other photos of picked liberty caps that help complete the picture. So what is this video for then? Well, you might want to learn the skills to identify liberty caps, simply because it's nice to be able to recognise the species that you live alongside, especially ones with such remarkable properties and cultural importance. Just admiring and maybe photographing liberty caps without picking them is your safest option. But you might be watching this video with an intention to consume magic mushrooms yourself, hoping maybe for fun or for healing or for a mystical experience. If that's the plan, then you'll want to keep the risks as low as you can. And hopefully this video can support you in that, mostly by reducing the chance that you eat some poisonous mushrooms by mistake. Collecting your own Liberty Cap mushrooms could also potentially be a safer choice than sourcing some other psychedelic substance through some other route, as the effects and risks of psilocybin are relatively well understood and researched, and people have been using mushrooms in this way for a long time. Do all the research you can before considering eating Liberty Caps. Jumping in with a random dose and in the wrong setting can be disastrous. It's easy to underestimate what these little mushrooms can do, and especially if you're young or your mental health isn't great, you could end up regretting using them. If you do plan to gather liberty caps, putting in the effort to get the identification right is just the first of loads of opportunities you have to better understand and manage the risks and to boost the chance of getting whatever it is that you are seeking from your experience. There's no room in this video to discuss in detail the cautious approaches for using liberty caps, but our new not-for-profit organisation, The Forest, exists to support and connect people as they navigate their own path with psychedelics. I now want to give some context to justify watching this long video rather than just quickly googling liberty cap identification tips and maybe trying to match mushrooms you might find to images of magic mushrooms online. Sadly there's money to be made by taking advantage of people's keenness to access this knowledge and stay safe. So some of the top Google results about Liberty Cap identification are essentially clickbait full of reckless inaccuracies and mislabeled photos of random mushrooms, all to promote products or sell adverts under the guise of providing information. In the notes, I'll put some links to better resources. Another source of confusion is that the photo agencies that sell pictures to the media and to websites are always getting their mushroom identification wrong. So even accurate coverage of the cutting-edge research on psilocybin and mushrooms are often illustrated with pictures of random and sometimes poisonous fungi. Smartphone apps might seem to offer an alternative to learning how to identify mushrooms yourself, but they don't yet. These screenshots show that you can give this type of software a picture of potentially deadly mushrooms, and it may wrongly guess that the mushrooms in the picture are magic ones. This video is more an attempt to help you develop the knack for recognising them, as you would if you spent a day out with an experienced Liberty Cat forager. Getting the knack involves looking at lots of mushrooms, mentally rehearsing the task, 
and noticing their differences and letting your animal mind get a feel for telling them apart. Until you feel that click of recognition when you see a liberty cat mushroom. For clarity, I'm going to pop up this little icon every time the shot shows liberty caps. Now at last, let's dive in on how to find and reliably recognise liberty cat mushrooms. Within the temperate zones, shown here in red, they've been found in many countries. If you look for them in the right season and in the right kind of habitat, you've got a pretty good chance of seeing them. Lived caps will start appearing whenever the weather gets cool and wet enough for them. In the British Isles, that might be in August in the higher, colder and rainier places, and maybe a month or more later in warmer, drier areas. Then they'll keep on fruiting throughout the autumn until the hard frosts end the season. It's those rainy autumn days that really bring out lots of mushrooms. You can find them in sunny weather, but only if it's cool and the ground has been soaked by plenty of rain a few days before you go looking. Many beautiful fungi grow in forests, and some of the most toxic do too. But you have to leave the woods to find liberty caps like these. They grow in rough wild pasture, like in the foreground here, and equally, they like lush green fields like in the background. In some places, they're the most abundant mushroom around. If you find mushrooms in parks or gardens, they're almost never liberty caps. Because liberty caps like growing where they're grazing animals, like cows or sheep. And they don't like artificially fertilised or ploughed land either. So head out for the wild. Rushes, like these ones on the left, can be a good indicator of the sort of wet, acid grasslands that liberty caps really like to grow in. You'll see many fascinating fungi. Don't pick them indiscriminately, hoping some might be magic. Liberty caps can grow among long grass, where they can be hard to spot. And they also grow among short grass like this, where it can be easier to see them. Mushrooms are like the fruit of a fungus, and the fungus is a network of threads and mycelium that is hidden beneath the mushrooms, often decomposing something for food. If you see mushrooms fruiting from animal dung, they're not liberty caps. You might though very occasionally spot a cousin of liberty caps, like these Psilocybe fumitaria. These are liberty caps. They only grow from a network of mycelium that is digesting all the dead grass and roots in the turf. Anything growing from anything else, like wood or soil or a tree, isn't a liberty cap. Now you know that, you can see that this stock image is mislabeled. If you spot a liberty cap, there are usually others growing nearby. You rarely find them all alone. Stay vigilant for other species growing right in amongst liberty caps, like these. Liberty caps never grow in tight clumps where the stems are all attached to each other. The overall shape of a liberty cap mushroom is like a hat on a stick. 
that's reflected in the name. On this American medal, there's a hat, a cap of liberty is called, on a pole, and that's an ancient symbol of freedom. The species name, which I'm going to confidently and incorrectly pronounce Semilanchiata, is also a reminder of the shape. Compared to familiar edible mushrooms, Liberty Caps are small. This one's cap hasn't opened yet, so that's about as small as they get. If you find a mushroom of that size or below, and it does have an open mature cap, like these ones, it won't be a Liberty Cap. At the other end of the scale, Liberty Caps don't get much bigger than this old rotting one. Notice how the cap margin has flared out. If a mushroom is much bigger and chunkier, like this beauty, you can rule it out, it's not a Liberty Cap. These are a typical size. The cap is about as big as my thumbnail. Liberty Caps vary in size at every stage of their development. So don't be confused if fresh ones like these are massive, whilst others that look older and mankier are small. The characteristic which can seem most confusing at first is that Liberty Caps come in two colours. However, once you understand it, this feature really helps with identification. Liberty Caps start off with that dark caramel colour that you can see on the right here. The surface is a bit shiny, like oily skin. And it's translucent, so you can see the vertical lines of the gills through it. Careful not to confuse the lines you can see through a Liberty Cap surface with any lines, creases or folds on the surface of a mushroom, like the ones you can see here. As the wind and the sun begin to dry the cap, it transforms. From the top and spreading downwards, it becomes opaque and cream coloured, hiding those dark gills, except at the bottom edge of the cap. Once you know that, you won't be fooled by mushrooms that are light but with a wet shine, like these slimy dung roundheads, because light goes with dry. And you also won't be fooled by mushrooms that are dark but opaque and not shiny, like these mottle gills. But beware, other mushrooms like the mottle gills at the bottom here do do their own version of the colour transformation thing. So you need to look at all the features put together to make an identification. You can see all the stages of the colour change here. Notice that they always transform from the tip down, so the cap edge is never the light part. Moist Liberty Caps can look especially dark when they're getting a bit old, soggy and mushy, like a couple of these. When Liberty Caps are moist, it's possible to peel a very thin, transparent jelly skin off of the cap surface. That's not a common feature of mushrooms, so it helps confirm identification. I really struggled to film this with one hand, so bear with me. You can just see that as the cap tears, a fragile, clear skin is visible. It's much easier to see on this related psilocybe species that has a thicker skin. The membrane on Liberty Caps is a bit more delicate. You can't really peel dry, pale Liberty Caps. Only the dark, moist ones. Let's look at the cap shape in more detail, as it's both distinctive and quite variable. These have the classic pointy bell shape those bells are taller than they are wide, and the bottom edge, the margin, is tucked in a little bit. This conical one has the tucked margin, and it's also taller than it is wide. And this quirky one is twice as tall as it is wide. This one is a bit unusual, as it's wider than it is tall, but it's still got some height to the bell. This mushroom's cap hasn't got that height. It's like an umbrella, so it's not a liberty cap. You can see the typical range here. The best known feature of Liberty Caps is the nipple on the top. You might ask why we didn't look at that first. The reason is that beginners can rely too much on the nipple and begin to see it everywhere. 
That's called confirmation bias. Lots of mushrooms have some sort of peak to the cap, which you could call a nipple. Some, like these fibre caps, are very poisonous. Here on the excellent Shroomery forum, someone has collected beautiful fibre caps, thinking that they are libidge caps. Their good sense to check the identification with experienced foragers on Shroomery may have saved their life. Web caps are also known to have fooled foragers who were just guided by the nipple. This report, with its judgmental title, describes a man who destroyed his kidneys by eating web cap mushrooms. These cases are very rare and very avoidable if you understand that you can't identify liberty caps by any single feature. You have to consider all of the features together. The range of nipples on liberty caps is diverse and overlaps with what you might see on other mushrooms. Some are pointy, some rounder, some not really there at all. You could find other mushrooms like these ones in the same habitat with more obvious nipples. This sort of two-part nipple, basically one with an areola, is a strong hint that you have a liberty cap. Another strong hint is that on a moist liberty cap, the nipple isn't merely the peak of the cap, but is a structure in its own right, which can be different in colour. Here, the nipples barely protrude at all, but the way the sun comes through differently helps catch the eye. You can see the typical range of liberty cap nipples here. Just like the caps, Liberty Cap stems have a wonky charisma to them. Though there are other mushrooms with wiggly stems. Compared to many mushrooms like these mottle gills, the stems are less like a stick and more like a string. They can be a bit hollow, like this, but they feel solid and not too collapsible and spongy. The stem's surface is smooth, but look closely and you can see the silky twisted fibres that make up the stem. They are equally thick all the way down, like a cocktail stick, but maybe a bit thicker and fluffier where they attach into their mycelium at the bottom. They don't do that wet, dry colour change that the caps do. They start off white, and I suppose like human teeth, they tend to gradually go yellowy and even orange and brown over time. And they darken with handling, you may have heard that if a mushroom is magic, it will bruise blue like these have. This is very useful for identifying some species of magic mushroom, although some other non-magical mushrooms bruise blue too. However, it's not that useful for liberty cap identification, especially if you're leaving them where they are to grow. Liberty caps rarely show a really striking blue. Liberty cap mushrooms never have a solid ring around the stem like some mushrooms do but sometimes you get a ring of spores around the stem, just a little black stain, like on this mushroom. And you also see it on some other mushrooms, like the dung roundhead. The gills of a mature liberty cap are dark from all the purple black spores that they're producing. You can also see in cross section that the edge of the gills slopes right up and it's only really attached to the stem at the very top. That's in contrast to one of the most common look-alikes, the dung roundhead, where the edge of the gills is kind of flat along the bottom, perpendicular to the stem. Liberty caps and dung roundheads grow together so often and vary so much that once they were incorrectly considered different varieties of just one species. You've now heard all the features that you need to identify liberty cap mushrooms. So it's time to see if you can apply them in practice. Here's three mushrooms. Are there any features that you can see that would help rule any of them out? Would you be confident that any of them are liberty caps? You can pause the video if you want to see if you can bring to mind any of the distinguishing features. The colour of the cap, gills and stem are all wrong on the one on the right. 
many of the small orangey mushrooms like this are from the Galerina genus. And I don't know if this one's toxic, but some Galerina are deadly. What about the one in the middle? The colour of the cap looks about right, though it doesn't really have a nipple. And it lacks that dark band around the margin of the cap. The stem isn't quite the right colour, and it looks more grainy than fibrous. This, I think, is one of the best lookalikes. It's called the Dewdrop Mottlegill. The mushroom on the left has a nipple. It has a greasy, moist, caramel-coloured cap. There's the vertical lines of gills visible through the cap, and you can see that kind of dark band around the margin of the cap. The stem looks fibrous, it's kind of ivory colour, and there's a dark ring of spores around the stem. That is a Liberty cap. The gills of these are white, which rules out Liberty caps. You can see the vertical lines of gills through the cap. The shape's roughly right, and there's kind of a nipple. But it's all orange, even the gills, so it's not a Liberty cap. You can see the silky fibres on the surface of the stem. And even though there's not really much of a prominent nipple, you can see internally there's a nipple-like structure, as you can in this one. Both of these are Liberty caps. These are umbrella-shaped rather than lance-shaped, and the cap margins seem to be lighter rather than darker than the cap, so they're not Liberty caps. These seem too papery and pale. They're not Liberty caps. I can see some silky fibres in the stems. The caps look kind of caramel and greasy. There's obvious nipples. There's a dark margin. Uh, the gill lines don't look very dark, but that's because these are quite young Liberty caps. There's vertical lines showing on the cap here, but you can see that they're more grooves. You're not seeing gills through a smooth surface. It's not much like a Liberty cap. There's a silky stringy stem. You can see those vertical gill lines and the dark margin. That's a Liberty cap. These show that colour change from the top down where the cap becomes pale and opaque, just like a Liberty cap. But they're not Liberty caps. They don't have the dark gills. They're actually those Galerina again. This is a mushroom with some personality. It's kind of irregular. The stem is an equal thickness wherever you look. It's got a clear nipple. It's obviously a Liberty cap. This one has that little stain of dark purple black spores around the stem. That's also a Liberty cap. We have a bell-shaped cap, taller than it is wide, almost a nipple. It's growing from dung. It's all white and the stem seems to have fluff on it, not a Liberty cap. These seem quite dark and brown, but they've got no shine to them. They're not Liberty caps, and if you crumble the cap, there's no sign of that jelly layer, even though they're quite moist. These are mottle gills. There's a bell-shaped cap, but no obvious nipple. There's a dark margin to the cap. That is a Liberty cap, but you might need to inspect it more closely. A beginner might be fooled by the appearance almost of a nipple here, but there's no darkness to the gills, there's no dark margin to the cap, and they're very fragile. These aren't Liberty caps. These ones are growing from dung. The colours and proportions aren't quite right, but if you thought that they had a psilocybe vibe to them, you'd be right. They're psilocybe fumitaria. Magic, but not a Liberty cap. This mushroom is getting old, but you can still see the pale cap, the dark gills, and the nipple. That's a Liberty cap. You probably recognise these ones by now. They have that slimy cap more than greasy, and even though they resemble Liberty caps enough to be mixed up with them all the time, they're dung roundheads. This one's quite similar in shape to the dung roundhead in the last shot, quite similar in colour too, but you can see that dark margin to the cap and the little fibres on the stem. That's a Liberty cap. These look a lot like a hat on a stick, just like a Liberty cap does, but they don't have nipples, and they're dark even though they're dry. These are mottle gills, again, one of the best lookalikes. 
To me, model gills often look like they're made of paper and the stem looks like a plastic straw more than a piece of string. These blackening wax caps don't really look anything like Liberty caps. If you had to think twice, you're not really close to being able to identify Liberty caps in the field. Here's a group of mushrooms growing near each other, all with nipples, all with a cap shape where the margin is turned inwards and darker. These are classic Liberty caps. You can see the vertical lines of the gills through the moist caps. The gills are white on this mushroom and the stem, even though it's fibrous, seems to change in thickness. The caps here are smooth and dry and light and opaque. There's a dark margin to the cap. There's obvious nipples. They're Liberty caps. The next few shots are all of the same species of mushroom. It's quite small, the margin of the cap turns inwards and is darker, the gills are dark, the cap here is dry and pale, and here the cap is darker where it's moister, and you can see the vertical lines of the gills through the cap surface. But there's no nipple, and this isn't a liberty cap, even though the gills do slope up and attach only at the top. You can see that the stem seems grainy, it's not quite the right colour. This species, which I suspect to be the dewdrop mottle gill, might be the best lookalike around. Here's a direct comparison alongside a Liberty cap. Can you spot some of the key differences? Would you feel confident to identify these mushrooms in the wild? There's almost a nipple visible here, but the colours aren't quite right. There's no dark margin. It's not a Liberty cap. These mushrooms are extremely tiny and fragile. They have white gills. They're too small and delicate to be liberty caps, and they don't have a nipple. The type of nipple you can see here is very distinctive. These are liberty caps, although the stems are quite dark yellowish. That's because they're quite old. Do you recognise this one yet? It's a mottle gill. That white frilly bit around the margin shows it's a petticoat mottle gill. This group of mushrooms shows the characteristic colour change that you see in liberty caps, but they're not growing in grass. They're conical brittle stems. Neither of these mushrooms has a very convincing nipple, but one is a liberty cap. The one on the left has that grainy dark stem, which shows that it's a mottle gill. This mushroom has a slightly wavy stem alongside many other classical liberty cap characteristics. It's a liberty cap. This mushroom has quite a dark orangey stem. You might want to compare it to a couple of other specimens to confirm that it is indeed a liberty cap. These mushrooms are quite interesting. They don't have the dark gills and dark spores that you expect to see in liberty caps, but their structure, especially the translucent nipple at the top, screams liberty cap, and they were growing near others. They are actually liberty caps. They're what some people call sterile or albino liberty caps. Maybe a mutation has stopped their spore production. But if you're collecting liberty caps and would have rejected these ones, or rejected some of those without clear nipples, that's not a mistake to worry about. It's good to leave anything you're not 100% confident you've correctly identified. The only mistakes to worry about are the false positives, when you consume mushrooms that aren't what you think they are. You could do that just once and be hospitalised. You don't need to worry about the false negatives, when you decide not to pick a mushroom, even though it was actually what you were looking for. A safe mushroom collector is not the one who collects the most of what they want. It's the one who collects none of what they don't want. So are you ready now to identify Liberty Caps in the wild? That's a judgment that only you can make. You can use the notes that go with this video on our website to help. You can also take good quality photos of the mushrooms you find and see if members of online groups agree with your identification. I'll put some links and tips in the notes. If this video has value to you, we'd really appreciate your support for our work. If you head to the website and donate, we can do so much more. Keep an eye on the website as it expands, and please get involved. Write in the comments what topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. Thanks, and good luck with finding Liberty Caps.